What's going on everybody? Today I will be continuing to cover the win totals for college football teams and we will be predicting the over under for all the SEC teams. We won't be predicting these team schedules but I will just briefly preview their schedule and give my prediction on if I think they will go over or under on their win total. But before we get into looking at these win totals for the SEC teams, let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football then you will love this channel. Because we upload daily college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing. And also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into the video. We are going to start at the bottom with the lowest win totals. And the team with the lowest win total in the SEC is obviously Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is always the worst team in the SEC. And I don't think anything will change in 2024 for Vanderbilt. They have a win total of 2.5 which is very low. They do have three very winnable games on the schedule like it's Alcorn State, Ball State, and Georgia State. The Georgia State game could be a toss-up since it is on the road, but Georgia State does rank near the bottom of the country in returning production, so I think they won't lose to Georgia State. And if they do somehow lose to Georgia State, then maybe they can upset a team like South Carolina to get their third win on the season. But regardless of what happens, I'm going to take the over 2.5 for Vanderbilt football in 2024. The next team is Mississippi State, and their win total is at 4.5. If Mississippi State goes undefeated in non-conference, then I think they could potentially go over. But it's not going to be easy to beat Arizona State on the road in Toledo at home. Toledo should be a win, but I think Arizona State will be better next season, so that could be a very tough game on the road for Mississippi State. And then the conference schedule will also be tough, but they do have very winnable games at home against Arkansas and Florida. Mississippi State ranks near the bottom of the country in returning production, and I think they are definitely a team in rebuild mode, so I think they are definitely going under 4.5. But maybe in a couple of seasons, Mississippi State will be a lot better. But Jeff Levy has a lot to clean up at Mississippi State. The next team is South Carolina, and their win total is at 5.5. They have four easy wins against Vanderbilt, Walford, Akron, and Old Dominion. South Carolina will be returning a decent amount of talent on defense. And they have done a very solid job at utilizing the transfer portal, but I still expect them to be one of the worst teams in the SEC. And they play eight teams that are in the top 25 right now. So I don't see South Carolina winning more than 5 games, so I am going with the under 5.5. The next team is Florida, and they have a win total of 5.5. And, and honestly, they have to have the most brutal schedule that I've ever seen. Florida is a very young team, and they are returning a decent amount of talent. They've done a pretty good job in recruiting, and they also brought in some key additions from the transfer portal. Guys like defensive tackle Joey Slackman, and some really good secondary additions. Jameer Grimsley, Asa Turner, DJ Douglas, and Trecrez Bridges. And I do think this is a team that could be better, but realistically, I cannot predict them to win a lot of games with that schedule. And this team has struggled a lot with Billy Napier as the head coach, so this is really a make or break for Billy Napier and this Florida team. They have the talent on the team, but they have to execute on the field, and that schedule is brutal. I think they split the games with Miami and Texas A&M, and I also think they split the games with Tennessee and Kentucky. The guaranteed win should be Mississippi State and Sanford. They should also beat UCF, but that could be a very sneaky game. But for them to win six games, they would have to be either Georgia, Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, or Florida State. And they will probably not be favorites in any of those games, but I think it is possible that they win one of those games. So I have them barely going over five and a half wins. This could be like a six and six season. But we'll see when I actually do my schedule predictions. But next year is going to be tough for this Florida Gators team. But I am picking the over five and a half for the Florida Gators. The next team is Arkansas and their win total is at five and a half. It feels like it is safe to say that this Arkansas team will go under 5.5 because they were really bad last season and they don't return a lot of talent. They lost KJ Jefferson and a bunch of defensive talent. I really don't need to look at their schedule much because it is a tough schedule and I don't see them making a bowl game. And I think most people could agree that Arkansas will not be winning more than 5 games next season and they will not be good next season. So I'm picking the under 5.5 for Arkansas football. The next team is Kentucky and their win total is actually at 6.5. I would not be surprised to see Kentucky go over or under on their win total. I feel like this is a tough over-under pick. Their guaranteed wins are against Southern Miss, Ohio, Vanderbilt, and Murray State. They also play South Carolina, Auburn, and Florida. And I think they can potentially win two of those three games. And then you got the games against Louisville and Tennessee. And I think they could possibly win one of those two games. I guess I am going to go with the over on this schedule. I think Kentucky is a difficult team to predict though. They rank 102nd in returning production. But I like what they did in the transfer portal picking up former 5-star high school quarterback recruit Brock Vandegrift. They also picked up some other solid receivers out of the transfer portal and I think the schedule is favorable enough for Kentucky to win 7 games. So I do have Kentucky going over 6.5 wins. The next team is Oklahoma and they have a win total of 7.5. And, 
and they have a pretty tough schedule. And it's going to be hard to see Oklahoma win eight games in 2024. I think the first five games are pretty manageable, but I see them dropping a game to either Tulane, Tennessee, or Auburn. I don't think they will beat Texas again. They should beat South Carolina and Maine, which puts them at six wins. And then they play four teams ranked in the top 12. They could possibly win one of those games, which puts them at seven wins. But I don't see them winning eight games. This is another team where I could see a scenario where they go over. But I still think there's too many questions on this Oklahoma team. They lost a lot on offense. And Jackson Arnold still needs to cut down on mistakes. I expect Oklahoma to be good. But year one in the SEC could be difficult. But I still do trust Brent Venables to keep this team heading in the right direction. And maybe we see a potential 12-team playoff run from them within the next couple of seasons. Definitely if Jackson Arnold really steps up and becomes an elite quarterback. But a positive that they have next season is that they return a lot on defense. But I do still think they will go under 7.5 in 2024 because the schedule is pretty difficult. The next team is Auburn and their win total is at 7.5. It's pretty interesting that Auburn has a win total at 7.5. I guess it makes some sense. They do return some decent talent and this Auburn team really has a bright future with the success that they've had in recruiting. But in my opinion, I think we need another year or two before we could consider Auburn an 8 or 9 win team. They could possibly even be a 12 team playoff contender by then. But I know Auburn won 6 games last season, but they didn't beat any good teams. I think next season is going to be a season where Auburn could basically compete with anybody. But I don't think they will win 8 games. Next season, Auburn is going to learn a lot. And then maybe 2025 is the year they start to win the big games. Peyton Thorne has a lot of improvement to do, and the 2024 schedule for Auburn is very difficult. The game against California is not an easy win in my eyes. I actually think California is a slept-on team, and that game is a toss-up in my opinion. I think the game against Oklahoma could be considered a toss-up as well. I think they should definitely start 4-2, and two, and they could possibly split the games against Oklahoma and California, but I definitely see them losing to Georgia. They should beat Vanderbilt and UL Monroe later in the season to put them at 6 wins on the season, and I think they can either beat Kentucky, Texas A&M, or Missouri to put them at 7 wins. But the game against Alabama is on the road, so I do think they will lose that game. But in my opinion, I could see a world where Auburn goes into the last game against Alabama being 7-4. and four. But I think Alabama should beat Auburn. The schedule isn't super difficult, but it's still an SEC schedule and Auburn still has some question marks. So I can't realistically see them going over 7.5. So I have to take the under 7.5 for Auburn football in 2024. Maybe I'm going too in detail with the schedules, but I'm just trying my best to evaluate these team schedules so I can predict an over-under for these SEC teams. But anyways, the next team is Texas A&M, and their win total is at 8.5. Texas A&M is a team that isn't really being talked about a lot. They always get overhyped, so people get tired of talking about them. But something feels different about this Texas A&M team this time around. Mike Elko was a very good pickup at head coach, in my opinion. Just look at what he did at Duke, with the little resources that he had. This Texas A&M team is top 20 in returning production. Connor Wigman will be a quarterback with a lot of upside for this team. Texas A&M lost some guys in the transfer portal, but they also have the second best transfer portal class in the whole country. And I think the positives definitely outweigh the negatives for Texas A&M. This Texas A&M team could honestly be a sleeper team to make the playoffs. Not saying they will make the playoffs, but they aren't being talked about enough. Texas A&M should beat McNeese, Bowling Green, Arkansas, Mississippi State, South Carolina, and New Mexico State. Those are six easy wins. The 50-50 games could possibly be against Notre Dame, Florida, Missouri, LSU, Auburn, and Texas. And if they could split those six games, they would only have three losses. I really see an 8-4 or 9-3 record looking at it right now. And honestly, Texas A&M was pretty solid last season. And they return a lot, including Connor Wigman at quarterback. And I actually like what they did in the transfer portal. So I am actually going to surprisingly take the over 8.5 for Texas A&M football. And I think Mike Elko has this team heading in the right direction. But this was definitely a difficult win total to predict. But I don't know why, but I really like this Texas A&M team. The next team is Tennessee, and their win total is at 8.5. Tennessee has a very easy conference schedule. The only ranked SEC teams that they play are Alabama, Georgia, and Oklahoma. And their win total is only at 8.5. I think they lose to Bama and Georgia, and they lose to either Kentucky, Oklahoma, NC State, or Florida, which will drop them to three losses. But this one is almost easy for me. I like what Tennessee has on the offensive side next season with Nico at quarterback. But look at the receiving room for Tennessee. The receiving room for Tennessee is also going to be very stacked. The offensive line may have some question marks, but I do think Tennessee goes over 8.5 wins in 2024. The next team is Ole Miss, and their win total is at 9.5. This is such a free bet to me. I do not see a world where Ole Miss doesn't win 10 games or more. This is probably the easiest one of the video. They won 10 games last regular season. And they return Jackson Dart and they have the number one transfer portal class. And you're telling me their win total is only at 9.5. The defense will be better next year and the offense is going to be stacked again. 
This is a serious dark horse national title contender, and I mean that. I think they could definitely lose to Georgia, and even if they drop a game to a team like LSU, Oklahoma, Kentucky, or Florida, they are still a 10-win team. The schedule isn't much more difficult than it was last season, and next season they will be better. There's no way they don't go 10-2 or better, at least in my eyes. So definitely give me the over for Ole Miss football in 2024. The next team is Missouri, and their win total is at 9.5, and their schedule honestly sets up for a potential 12-0 record. They have such an easy schedule for an SEC team. They only play three ranked teams. Look, I'm going to keep this short and simple. Missouri is a good team. They return Brady Cook and Luther Burden. The defense will also be solid. This is an easy over for me, so give me the over 9.5. This win total should honestly be moved up to 10.5. The next team is LSU, and their win total is at 9.5. I really think LSU is going to be an elite team very soon, but I don't think next year is the year for LSU. They have too much to clean up on defense, and the offense lost a lot of talent. I still expect them to be good. The offense will definitely be good with Garrett Neusmeyer at quarterback. He's definitely going to be a baller, but I think the 2025 or 2026 season will be the year for LSU. I'm talking about a potential national title run. But next year, I see them going 9-3 and or 8-4. and four. Their schedule isn't very easy. They have to play Alabama, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Texas A&M, and USC and Florida will not be guaranteed wins either. I have to take the under 9.5 for LSU in 2024, just because there's too many questions on the defensive side. But I'm telling you, in a couple years, this team has potential to be very scary. And maybe as soon as next year, they could prove me wrong. I know how good the coaching staff is, but I just don't see them being a playoff team, not yet at least. They are definitely in the conversation, but this is just my opinion on LSU, and I'm taking the under 9.5 for LSU football in 2024. The next team is Alabama, and their win total is at 9.5. Alabama has a pretty difficult schedule. I know Kalen DeBoer is going to do great work at Alabama, but this team lost a decent amount of talent to the NFL, and they also lost talent to the transfer portal after Nick Saban left. This Alabama team will still be a top contender in my eyes, but they have tough games against Missouri, Tennessee, LSU, and Oklahoma, and they also have sneaky games against Wisconsin on the road and against Auburn, and that's never an easy game. I think they lose to Georgia, and I do think they lose two more games after losing to Georgia. I'm going to take the under 9.5 for Alabama. There's a bunch of mixed reactions for this Alabama team. A lot of people do not know what to expect. But the SEC is going to be stacked next year. And I do think Kalen DeBoer has potential to win a national championship at Alabama. But I think year one for Kalen DeBoer at Alabama will be a bit difficult. He's going to have to learn how to adapt. But I think Kalen DeBoer has potential to do great things at Alabama. But as of next year, I am taking the under 9.5. But this was kind of a 50-50 decision in my eyes. And I honestly would not be very shocked to see them going over 9.5. But I decided to take the under. The SEC is going to be stacked. And Kalen DeBoer is going to have to learn how to adapt to SEC football. The next team is Texas and their win total is at 10.5. This is probably the most difficult win total for me to predict. I know that Texas has potential to win the national championship next season. They have a lot of talent returning. Their offense is going to be very scary. And the defense is only going to get better. But the schedule is very difficult, and I think year one in the SEC for Texas will definitely be a very difficult experience. The game at Michigan will be difficult. I know Michigan lost a bunch of talent, but the game is on the road, and Michigan is still going to have a very good defense. And they return players like Colston Loveland at tight end and Donovan Edwards at running back on the offensive side. Those are two key players to the team, and the offense isn't going to be terrible. This Michigan team will still be a talented team, probably not on the same level as Texas, but the game is on the road, so we don't know what will happen. And then Texas has to play Georgia, which they could very well lose. And what about the game against Oklahoma? That will not be an easy game because let's not forget, Oklahoma actually beat them last season. But they also have a decent test on the road against Texas A&M to end the season. I think they lose to Georgia and I think they will actually drop one more game on the season. And I am actually going to take the under 10.5 for Texas in 2024. I see Texas going 10-2 or 11-1, but just because they're new to the SEC and they still have some questions in the secondary, I have to take the under. But I wouldn't be very surprised to see Texas bounce back and possibly win the SEC championship. But like I said, these are not my official predictions or anything. It's just me speculating. And right now, I have a feeling that Texas is going under 10.5 in 2024. I think they will lose a game that they should not lose. But the last team is Georgia, and their win total is at 10.5. Their schedule is brutal, but I cannot predict Texas and Georgia to both go under 10.5. I know Georgia has one of the most difficult schedules in the whole country. But Kirby Smart already knows how to win in the SEC. And Kirby Smart is building a dynasty at Georgia. I do not see Georgia dropping two games on that schedule. They probably have the most talented roster in the country heading into next season. So I have to take the over 10.5 for Georgia in 2024.
for the Georgia Bulldogs in 2024. But anyways, that's going to do it for the video. You guys let me know down in the comments below which SEC team you guys think I am sleeping on. But let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you will love this channel because we upload daily college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But that's going to do it guys and peace out.